So you've just sinned, again. You put up a good fight for a while, but you're back on the ground, exhausted. Sure, you'll get back up, but how do you really like your chances? Do you have what it takes to overcome sin? Have you memorized your Bible forwards and backwards? Do you pray every single morning? Have you cultivated a willpower so disciplined that you can withstand any temptation? I hate to break it to you, but you haven't. Actually, none of us have. Maybe we can avoid sin for a while, but sooner or later, we fail. We cannot overcome sin alone. But maybe we don't have to. Sin isn't something anyone should take lightly, least of all Christians. And to be honest, probably none of us take sin as seriously as we should because we have a hard time viewing it as God does. The biblical writers try and paint a picture for us and it's not pretty. They associate sin with death, pain, suffering, darkness, destruction, evil, and fear. Ultimately, it's separation from God. It's serious. So serious, in fact, that sometimes we're not even comfortable calling sin what it is. We prefer words like shortcomings or flaws. And sin relates to these things too, but it's much broader and even more sinister. When we use softer words to describe sin, we might be tempted to minimize how big of an enemy it is. Let's see how serious sin really is. Paul equates sin to a formidable weapon, like a nuclear bomb that death uses to destroy us. And we need to treat it that carefully. When we view sin appropriately, it can really freak us out because we also realize at exactly the same time just how powerless we are against it. In order to stop sinning, we have to draw closer to God. And the closer we draw to God, the better we understand sin. And the better we understand sin, the more we see it. And that's kind of like suddenly being able to see the layer of bacteria crawling all over and under and inside everything, everywhere, all the time. Even when we feel like we're at our best, if we look a little bit closer, we'll realize we still have not escaped sin. This enemy hides in corners. It disguises itself as good. It turns small footholds into incredible strongholds. But by contrast, we're prone to wander, we're incredibly weak, and we are constantly tempted to mistake evil for goodness. Fortunately, we have a ringer. We might not be equipped to fight and actually have any hope of winning, but that doesn't mean we have to lose. We happen to know someone way stronger than sin who is more than up for the task. Of course, I'm talking about Jesus Christ never once fell to sin, shook off death like an old jacket, has had all things placed under his feet. There's not a single victory he hasn't won that he doesn't want to share with you. John says, who is it that overcomes the world? And then he answers, whoever believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This isn't just an intellectual belief, it's a trust. Restated, it might sound like, who overcomes the world? The person who trusts that Jesus overcame the world for us and wants to share his victory. You are still gonna struggle against sin in this life because Satan is not happy that he was so embarrassingly conquered. And the reality is, we are still weak. You will live your entire life fighting his cheap attacks. So if you're expecting that Christ's victory means you'll never be tempted or sin again, you've got another thing coming. This is what I mean when I say we can't overcome sin. Not only are we simply not strong enough to fight it alone, but even since Jesus did his work on the cross, we are still, in a very practical way, going to have to fight to not let sin overtake us. We're still flesh and blood, and flesh and blood cannot inherit what Jesus has won for us yet. This doesn't mean you stop fighting. Bob and weave, baby. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Find resources, study God's word, get help from your friends, and reject the idea that your struggle against sin means that you need to withdraw from God out of embarrassment. It's the opposite. Because you still struggle, you still need him to fight for you and in you, and he will. Realizing that we simply cannot overcome sin by our own strength is a harsh reality. It's to recognize our own weakness and admit the strength that sin has over our lives. 
but it's also the first step in realizing that you absolutely need help from the one who has a perfect record against sin and death, Jesus. In John 16, Jesus has some parting words for his disciples that echo down to us today. He paints a bleak picture saying that we are going to struggle. We are going to face persecution and sorrow and the temptation to run from God and give up the fight. But one piece of encouragement eclipses all of that when he says, I've said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Thanks for watching Magnified. If you found our content helpful, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. We really appreciate your support.